And that's a virtual wrap. It's the final game for Virtual Boy on Virtual Boy Works. Just like that, our journey through the licensed Virtual Boy library has concluded. Oh, there are still a few gray area odds and ends for us to explore, but as of this episode, we have officially seen the sum total of the console's catalog from around the world. I'm happy to say that while Virtual Boy's library was short and sometimes troubled, we do at least get to go out on a high note. Virtual Bowling may not seem a likely candidate for greatness, but it's actually one of the stronger titles for the system. It's definitely the superior bowling game on Virtual Boy. I don't know who decided this meager console library needed two Tetris games and two bowling games, but Virtual Bowling leaves Nestor's Funky Bowling in the dust. It's a rock-solid adaptation of the sport that also does a subtle but spectacular job of making use of all of Virtual Boy's most distinctive features. Not bad for a game with such a deeply limited premise. But then again, Virtual Boy games seem to do best when they're extremely finite in scope. The 3D parallax visual tech that defined the system really lent itself to shoebox diorama setups. While you had a few exceptions to that rule, like Wario, who is always an exception to the rules, for the most part, Virtual Boy proves to be the most satisfying when developers took a single premise and explored it in depth, as it were. Beyond that, it's also no surprise whatsoever that developer Athena would turn out a great take on bowling. That's kind of what Athena did best. We've already encountered Athena in Game Boy Works with 1990s World Bowling, and Virtual Bowling is essentially a sequel to that game. As with the best sequels, it builds and improves on the earlier work, sanding down the rough edges to create a genuinely great take on the subject matter. Virtual Bowling doesn't include any weird gimmicks. It's literally just bowling. You can pick from three different modes and bowl 10 frame games with a variety of different options. And that's really all there is to it. What makes Virtual Bowling so great is that its mechanics are straightforward enough that you can bowl a consistently strong game once you pick up the systems. But there are enough dynamic factors that you really have to pay attention and make an actual effort to keep up your momentum. The ball you choose, the rolling technique you adopt, the hand you favor, all these things affect the roll, so you need to shift your position and time your throw carefully depending on the foundational factors you choose for each game. The actual act of bowling here works about like you'd expect. You choose a starting position from which to approach the lane, choose a point to aim toward, and begin your roll. Once you begin your throw, a lateral slider pops up to allow you to set the ball's spin, and then a second slider appears to determine the strength of your roll. The amount of spin you'll want to apply to the ball depends on the playstyle you've adopted. A strong approach emphasizes direct rolls, while tech play encourages rolls with greater English. The strength meter is a two-part interaction in this game. You press the button once to determine your arm's furthest extension, and then again to set where in the swing you'll release the ball. An icon toward the lower end of this meter marks the optimal release point, and if you manage to hit it dead center on the exact frame that it passes over the icon, you'll have a much better chance of a perfect roll that nets a strike. Unlike in Nestor's Funky Bowling, you can roll pretty consistent strikes, or at least spares, once you get a handle on the specifics of each game. This is a bowling adaptation where you can hit three or four strikes in a roll. And when your streak breaks, it's not because the game was programmed badly, but rather because you mistimed your release. Virtual Boy offers a practice mode that allows you to set up any configuration of pin you like and quit at any time. There's also a single play mode in which you play 10 frames and aim for the best possible score. The meat of Virtual Bowling, however, comes in the tournament mode in which you challenge four other imaginary players to a set of three 10-frame games. This is a pleasantly fast-paced mode with a remarkably fair difficulty curve. The tournament consists of four matches, and the first match is pretty easy to win if you have a decent handle on the game mechanics. The second match poses a stiff but not unreasonable challenge, and beyond that, you really need to be able to roll multiple consecutive strikes consistently. You don't have to watch the other contestants roll, which makes this a lot more fun than a real bowling session, but every few frames you'll see one of your rivals pop up and throw a comet your way. All the other players appear in silhouette, so you get a sense that, for example, Mary is a young woman and Max is a beefy dude wearing spiked leather, but overall the game maintains a sort of classy abstraction that offers a welcome point to Nestor's weirdness. If you manage to come in first in a three-game match, you're given a password you can use to resume your progress the next time you play. All in all, it's a simple but effective take on bowling, highly playable, and even legitimately thrilling when you're neck and neck with an opponent going into the final frames. 
and Virtual Bowling does a great job of playing up the Virtual Boy's strengths. Bowling, by its very nature, works well on the console's screens, but Athena did an excellent job of incorporating some reverse angles to mix things up and to make on-screen objects pop, and the occasional visual gimmicks that do show up, like the turkey that smacks into the screen when you hit three strikes in a row, are used sparingly enough to have genuine impact. Virtual Bowling also does a nice job of making use of the system's odd controller. As you bowl, you set your position with the left D-pad, and you set your aim with the right. It's a small thing, but it really speaks to how much thought Athena put into this game. Unlike most of the other games to get shoveled onto the shelves at the end of Virtual Boy's Japanese run, Virtual Bowling actually feels complete, as though the publisher had time to polish this game and to make it exactly what they wanted it to be. It's a limited and unpretentious work, but it's great at doing what it sets out to do. After several consecutive titles that have put the shit in Shitano, it's nice that the final Virtual Boy Holy Grail is actually pretty darn good. The only downside to Virtual Bowling is that, well, it's one of the Shitano, and it's the most expensive of the lot. On the rare occasions that copies of this game come up for sale, they go for easily more than $2,000. Even fan-made homebrew cartridges can sell for hundreds of dollars, which is wild. This is a good game, but it's not that good. Still, ravenous fan demand for impossibly rare Virtual Boy releases notwithstanding, Virtual Bowling is a pleasant and enjoyable finale to Virtual Boy works. Like much of this series, it's an unassuming little game that turned out to be a lot better than you'd expect. And that, friends, is the end of Virtual Boy Works. All 22 games complete, good, and bad. Don't worry, though, this series isn't entirely finished. There's still the console to talk about, and let's not forget some of the more interesting homebrew and unreleased titles. Yes, there's still plenty of content on the way to appease your ceaseless thirst for Virtual Boy. Uh, you do have a ceaseless thirst for Virtual Boy, right? Right. <laughs>